those of MyTV, MyTV staff, and or any contributors to MyTV. You are watching the God of Our Nation program, Against All Odds, Kingdom Economics. Trust God with your life and share the little you have for others to live. The righteous shall live by faith. In the past few months, our beloved nation had to endure the global pandemic COVID-19 and the aftermath of Tropical Cyclone Herald. In spite of it all, we choose to make a difference where we can. Whether it's traveling south to Kandavu Island to help affected families rebuild their lives, some of whom had nothing but the clothes on their back and a pitch tent for shelter, or visiting frontline personnel who worked tirelessly away from their families so we could be safe and sound with our loved ones. Whether we assisted our town councils and communities with charity work of any kind, or simply saved meals and items we would throw away to share with people on our streets and those who worked tirelessly through the nights. Help give and share with faith the little that you have to people around you. From those you just walk by every day to neighbors who silently struggle to put a meal on their table, the smallest things can make the biggest impact. Stay tuned to this episode as we learn more about Kingdom Principles Against All Odds. God, according to His word, will meet your every need. Hallelujah. You are worrying because you are serving a God you do not know. If you know this God, then you know what we are talking and about from this platform. He is a God against all odds. Which means that whatever that you're going through today, He is your God. It may be sickness, it may be financial loss, it may be any other things uh, that have been challenging your life today, or whatever odds that you're sitting on, I would like you to believe and receive today that He is that God against all odds. Bulubinaka, and uh, welcome yet again to the uh, God of Foundation program every Amen. Sunday at 10.30, all the way from Turek here in Suva. Amen. Yes, a big uh, greeting, sir, to all of you for the New Methodists. I believe uh, none of us is having Mission Sunday uh, as of this month, and we will continue for next week. And I believe most of you are actually just worshiping God this morning in worship centers or are within your family. So another big uh, thank you and Bulavinaka from Hallelujah. us. And it's the sec second Sunday of uh, 2021. Amen. And uh, everybody and everyone still busy with the school things, school stuff, or uh, getting your lives organized. So uh, today it's another injection to your spiritual life to tell you that all things are possible with God. Uh, we will never know a Tikobuli TV to come to the Nita Siri and Abunoya and the Dutikum will make in a Sanona, Evaka Sangani, a catch with Nakana internet and Abuno community came when you were wrong making and a Matakanikoa. In a community, Rawani, you're talking about Donabunoa, a Kerobakam Bullet to Kennedy, Kenda Rara, but the Sigma Nakanikoa, a Bakatalik and we came to my Bono level, a Tavioni, my law, Tuno law, came to my Savo, my Lambasa, Vaku Sivir, and a Vekanda Mimboa, a Bullare. Nakavalevo, na yalo vi nakani vi ingravi. Abe kete tone ni Methodist, abe kabodi ni sangewo ti mana nado to songoni. Meta mama na na noa, oki la na ti mi listel mi isu bana singa bakarumbuka. So vi nakwa kalevo na na yalo vi ingravi kalo ke na yalo vi nakani ti ti maki. Me roni vakaya vakaya na roka ni nomu ni vi ingravi mana noa. A big thank you and acknowledgement to those of uh, the uh, divisional, uh, regional coordinators uh, organizing the um, the northern get together. It was uh, a get welfare uh, charity drive, a welfare trip, all the way from the team of headquarters from Suva, uh, led by Ngasilevu, and uh, a few senior pastors, a total team of more than 25. Uh, they're actually part of the two trucks contingency uh, to take uh, the little things that we can help 
our families back in Boa. Mm -hmm. So um, today, I would like to thank you, divisional coordinators, uh, for making that happen, and also for the regional coordinators. Thank you, Tanagastiko, all the way from Manila. And I see the way you've been organizing um, uh, the team. I, I stand today to say thank you. Tanagastiko, yeah. uh, Ili, thank you. Tanagastiko, and Rendini, Tanagastai, thank you. All the regional coordinators. Tanagastiko, uh, thank you so much, and Auntie Oni. And I'm also, I want to, we would like to make a special mention of the uh, Talangasi Turangavo, Anti Sai, and Talangasi Venusi, and Rendini Tal Talangasi. Uh, a lot of work and efforts. Not only were you there uh, to see through the distribution and uh, go with the team, but uh, you were part of the packing and everything all the way from headquarters in Silva. And uh, it was a lot of investment, a lot of time, and a lot of commitment. Um, Kerabit tahun itu kita kasih lebih nama tak ni kuat. Na, na les, na program kita tu bakar orang tu bikin nama tak ni sengat mana dah nama against all odds. Emel balik ya. Na, na bikin sengat ni bina kai sengat bikin ni tu doko. Eh sengat bikin ni tiko. Yang gen tu bakar buat tiko ni ni kalungo koru ni tak kawan nak kaki dengan. Ah, kerabit tahun itu semua tak ni kuat. Main rock ni bina ya tu tiko imbuah. Na yau ti na tangi lamba. Eh, so we came ni eta zenga na dali ni vale. Eh, baka tumbo izu na vale. Eh, sega ni dona kai tiko. Eh, na yau ni na na maki kena baka baka rau. Ah, for us we were talking about this money. Eh, eh, baka kota serenga against all odds. Bela te ni baka tu ya na bunua. Eh, came ni sega baka rutaka ngana bunua ni lotu. Darama kena na kena uniform. Ah, ni wara katu ni laku 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 ni sewa. Otoran mata kini ko moka eh, we nak baka lebu. Na na yalo yeah na attitude ya na yalo tiko biki muni 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 maru taka seni waraka na kani kaloni ya biki muni yani na yalo ni na namaki na mataka ni kovi baka vi na kubiki mdo mbo um kito mbi tano chuko mbi tama ni na rendre ni ngoni sala na lugo ni mabo na vi bano eleta watu kina na chat na na kena zo biki muni yani au baka mbote sega ni yado yani mbalata ni tuvu tuva yado yani mbalata na yalo ni ngangu ndri kena Kena right attitude, kena elu vina kau mewi kemuni, na vika kemuni laku dulu rumah, kemuni sengan ni reda, mewa kau malu malu mesti kemuni, semuanya vaka malu malu mesti kemuni, kemuni reda, na elu ina nama ki, ni laku cikai ni nanti, mewa kau bola ini vika kemuni, na bunuh kemuni cikai kena. So on that note, thank you Tim Northern, we were really grateful and really excited with the achievement that has been achieved. During the weekend, kerana bapak bapak mertua ni nak sengan inden den, dan alis satu talian ibu bapa tu tak ki ibu bapa mena ruana koros sakirich mikin dan naturang ibu bapa mela bapa dari kini dan nasongan ibu bapa dalam ibu bapa. So on that note, I would like to say thank you. I was actually writing it down today, and and this goes for all new Methodists that are tuning in from all over, and a special mention to all of you foreign, you are tuning in today for Europe. I believe it's your afternoon or evening on Saturday, and for all the others. Uh, all uh, Australia, New Zealand, Vanuatu, I believe that, you know, it's only a few hours difference either behind yeah. us or um, ahead and one day, you know, those kind of differences, but it's still in the day. You can still listen in. And all the way in America, for those of you that are tuning in today and all over the world, um, you know, we're actually talking about Mbua and what is happening out there after the TC or the tropical cyclone, uh, Yasa. And, and I believe that it's a very crucial um, a topic because... And not only because of the cyclone, not only, and you may say to yourself, no, uh, we were not affected by the cyclone. You may not be affected. And I believe the very important and vital point in there is the attitude and the heart. Uh, regardless of whatever that you go through, you went against your odds by believing and trusting in God. So, uh, a big welcome to all of you. And also acknowledge no one is perfect. I believe I've been receiving reports, a lot of struggles, a lot of issues happening. Australia and uh, New Zealand, a lot of things are happening around us. You know, certain things we cannot control, but we just leave it up to God. And uh, I was telling us a to this morning uh, for Cyprus, Talanga Sipine and uh, Rendini, uh, under the overseer of uh, Talanga Sekoto, uh, Cyprus zone, we uh, always forget uh, to make a mention of the Cyprus zone all the way in Cyprus and uh, Northern Ireland. I know you're always there, a uh, busy Ralakut family. So today is an acknowledgement of all of you. And I know it's the beginning of the year. You either have uh, things to clear for 2020, and you're not really ready to look forward to 2021. And you have a lot of lists that is out there in front of you. And sometimes may just push you to forget to pray, or forget to serve God, or forget to tune in as and when we have the program. Uh, with that mentioned, uh, today, 
having like a new leaf in front of you, a starting off a new, um, you know, a new era for you for 2021. Uh, you look at it, you, you may, you know, have those uh, fears and uh, doubt, but today be rest assured, uh, whatever that you're going through, that this God, He's able and He can do all things. <laughs> Those that does not belong to yes. New Methodist Christian Fellowship. But you are remembered this morning. Amen. For all the way from Turek here in Suwa. Hallelujah. My Sudan, Katanakina, my Nagolan Heights, my Syria. Amen. Chisu and Matakani Sinitai. Sinule that weekend and a Tunabunua, Ogaesia, and Abunova Pacifica, Otonga, Samoa. Kiribas, Marshall Island, Papua New Guinea, Nimbulaminaka, Nibaro to my Nindo Namaka to my program with Ango against all odds. Hallelujah, God of our nation. Hallelujah. Bobby Minaka to get to Ganina, though Nana Maki to my Canama Australia, the city, the town, Lisa Mulaminaka, and Mataka, Missing and Dina. Hallelujah. Ditagana, we kind of say to Gani, and the Bingani Timuminaka in the Nimula. The Nana Makitugu in 2021 against all odds. Hallelujah. And uh, as we went to Mua last few days, we went out on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday morning, yeah. Uh, Mua and then to the Kondrobe in Sopsabu, then cross over to Maduata in Lambasa and back to Mua before we board our, our boat on uh, uh, Friday uh, afternoon or Friday early evening. It's uh, amazing mm. what you can uh, see and go through in the in the the situation that you that you've been challenged. Mm. It's the attitude of facing Hallelujah. what we are facing, because the attitude that we have can change Amen. the situation. Hallelujah. So 2021 is beginning to roll now, and today is the second Sunday. Hallelujah. So whatever you face in 2021 depends very much yeah. on the attitude that you carry. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the attitude that you carry that will allow you to rise and or to hallelujah. fall, to build or to destroy. Can I call with Jeremiah? Jeremiah, dini ni sukali lai, dini shengone, ya ausa sulemiko, motalaraka, mbasulaka. Hallelujah. Ya taraka tea. Amen. Hallelujah. Destroy uproot and uh, build up and uh, make it happen. Hallelujah. It depends on us and very much on our attitude. We can barum to Manikua, Sasar to Manikua, New Methodist combined to our zone. Hallelujah. Zone combined or just worship from centers, worship center. Yeah. And some of us we are listening from home or workplace. Remember, our attitude carries, determines. Mm. Hallelujah. Set the pace for 2021. Hallelujah. Your right attitude, I was speaking today on uh, power in the word, the attitude that you have. Mm. Your attitude will determine uh, your altitude. Altitude is the level that you will reach, but the attitude is us. Your attitude will take you to your altitude. Mm. Your altitude depends on your Attitude. attitude, yeah. Esa na tarong na attitude. Na attitude na ni na 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 morida na kai korida. Kama balay ako ba kai ko ndo budisa attitude problem. Ito kana problem ni nanda attitude. Da budisa senda wakasang iba karong at talendrendre. Um, and dalo koko wa. Yaa kaya ko na attitude ko ay taro ba kina na bikaroni da kama na kalobe kanda. Na buo na kiro ba sechko kina bikanda ni kumbale tibirto mimboa. Ni ba tu yana via ay na karo ni ba katu na karo ni COVID weekend na nrakia na ngona me me kole weekend na kaenda do ba kanu ni weekend na when you know your your resources have been taken away a challenge na no mo vale na na no mo zaka zaka na ilabo the money that you bring home for your family to survive with when that is taken away when it's not there na attitude ni nando bula sa ni vale vale ni nando bula Men the car kuwa hindi na ni may even don a car that really you know affect you, but don't allow that to affect you. Your attitude 
So regardless na kai koreda na nomu attitude e tukuna biko e segani dona kana kaurevitiko it's okay i'm okay so wuki be koya samo ge kai koya you know we are good it's okay but let anango ne koka kire it's okay then you know you are okay but you look around, it's not okay. You look around, you look into your pocket, there's no money. You look into the fridge, there's no food. Uh, you look around, this, you know, there's every you have every reason to tell you it's not okay. Or you check your children's bag. You may have four or five children, and they're all supposed to go to school. And you look like maybe only one of them has got a school bag, maybe none of them has got a school bag. Well, all the things you're looking at, it's not okay. But the attitude tells you it's okay. Everything is okay. So that just by establishing in your heart. Oh, I'm good. I am good. As soon or as long as you say, I am good, it's, you're not good because of you. You are good because of God. I am good. I am good. I am good. I am okay. Not because you can quickly find something to eat. No. Because God is going to provide something for you to eat. So you need to believe in this God who's going to make your situation good and make your situation okay. What will we eat? Where will we go? Where's the money to pay for our bills? So, you know, don't waste your time mulling over or thinking of things that will never change. Because no matter how long it takes for you to think of, so we can't send the van on the men. Today is the 10th. Today is the 10th. Uh, 10th of Jan. And uh, maybe the whole 10 days, the only thing you've been doing, maybe 50% uh, of those days, uh, just smiling and thinking, okay, what will I do? I haven't got this, I haven't got this. So every thoughts you have, it's either you don't have it, or how will I get it? Change your, your mindset today. No, I'm okay. It's going to be good. So you start looking around and pick the little things that you have. Maybe little or maybe small. Pick it up. If your children haven't got any school bags yet, uh, pick up the children's old school bags from last year. Wash them up. Start with the little things you have. If you have no money and you say that you don't have any more money, you come before God. You write down your list. Okay, I need this to be paid. I need to buy these things. You write it down. And then you tell God, I don't have it. I don't have any physically but I have you and I trust you God because according to the truth of your words you say in Luke 137 that with God nothing is impossible and if God is for you who should be against you he says in Romans 831 and he's, he's giving you a promise a promise that any man can lie to you but he will never lie to you because his words is there and it remains you know heaven and earth may depart but his word will stay forever which means a, a lot of promises can come your way or maybe you hear somebody say okay you know, don't worry. I will be buying you children stuff. Or don't, you know, don't worry about anything. I will be bringing you people's food. And until today, nothing has happened. So don't trust or rely on the word spoken by men or things around you. You believe and trust in the power and the word of God. Last night we were having a family devotion and I was really explaining to my grandchildren last night. I had three grand uh, children last night present. The other two are uh, busy setting up at the fourth shore for the church service today. And as I was sharing with them and I was telling them, you know, you need to trust and rely on the word of God. And two things I was telling them, you need to be diligent, like, you know, look out and check out things to be done and consistent. Don't do it well today and tomorrow you drop it off. Don't do it well this week and drop it next week. Don't do it well this month and drop it next month. And I was trying to teach them the basics on how to achieve in this school work by being consistent and the duties at home. And usually at home we have a fellowship today, like now, they are logging in and they're watching from uh, Lot 3 in Sekola Road. So Bulavinaka to uh, Lot 3, uh, Sekola Road uh, congregation. And uh, every Saturday, uh, there's certain things that needs to be done at home. We need to rearrange our lounge uh, to reflect the worship center so they can come and sit. And also, we need uh, them to prepare the Holy Communion. And that has been happening throughout the COVID time. Nearly most of the mornings, I'm coming to come here, and I'm reminding them, okay, who's doing the Holy Communion? Uh, do the Holy Communion. Uh, you know, set up. What's the roster? Who's leading today? Because we do our roster at home. We have our grandchildren standing up to lead the service, do Holy Communion, and everything. So last night, I was telling them, I shouldn't be doing that all the time. 
by being consistent, meaning you tell yourself, okay, I can do this thing. Especially when it has to do with the things of God. Because when you do that, God is looking your way. Whatever that you're going to be praying for, for the Holy Year, for your achievement for 2021, you know, just by doing that consistently, doing the Holy Communion, setting up the church service and the worship center, sitting there, waiting on God. It may sound so simple, but I believe that simplicity a call upon greatness into your life and answered prayers to your life. And this morning, surprisingly, I was still in my bedroom um, getting ready to come uh, to knock. One was earlier, about uh, one hour earlier. There's a knock on my door, and I said, Yeah, who is it? So I opened the door. One of them standing there, Can I borrow the key to your office to get the Holy Communion and stuff? I searched for my key, couldn't find it. I said, Okay, come back later. And then another hour later, the other one came, knock on the door, and uh, neither can I borrow the key to set up the Holy Communion and stuff. So by the time I get into the lounge, the room set up the uh, Holy Communion ready. And it may be so simple an example that I'm giving you today, but sometimes we. Uh, Forget about this simplicity of just being honest with God and doing the things you can do and maintain it. And so from your angle or from uh, wherever you're listening in, you may be writing your list today. And I need you today, as we have Holy Communion, uh, for you to write your list. Uh, like what I said, most of us, our school things is not complete for our children. Uh, some of us, we haven't really cleared the bill for 2021. Uh, you know, some of us, we don't even think beyond tomorrow. There's just too many things out there in, on your plate. But take today as that day. Take ownership. It's your attitude. Uh, smile. And there's more to life than that. Uh, some of you, it's like your burdens going with you. And you are always grumpy. You're always not smiling. It's like you're in another world. Hey, have a life. Rise above it. Because no matter how hard you think about it, it's not going to change. But when you have the right attitude and place it before God, and be happy. You know, just be content. The contentment in you. Be happy. If you have a piece of cassava to eat today, be happy. Just be content. That contentment, you know, takes you to another level. Because your attitude tells you, I'm not complaining there's no food. I'm not complaining that I'm lacking. I have a piece of cassava that I can eat today. I have a cup of tea that I can have today. And I'm okay. So by having that right attitude, wouldn't God watch over you? Wouldn't God come closer and listen to you? Wouldn't God change your situation before you? Just because you have the right attitude. When we talk about the right attitude, is having faith in God. Amen. That nothing is impossible. Yes. God can do it. When we travel through Mua, village after village after Hallelujah. village, then you see two attitudes. One attitude just lazing around. One attitude is looking forward to the things of God. Amen. While other attitude, the third one that I'll mention, is like a no care attitude. Hallelujah. No repairing, no wake up, no planting. It's just like continue with life and not rebuilding. When you have the right attitude that we're talking about, Hallelujah. that you want God to be part of your rebuilding. Amen. You want God to be part of your, your future. You want God to take over and take control of your life. And Hallelujah. that is the right attitude. That nothing is impossible. Why? Because you have God in you. Amen. Not the attitude of just sitting and lazing around. And waiting and like, and, and like a, a no-care attitude. Amen. No? And sometimes when you go to villages in Boa, it's a fact that is happening right now. Um, no rebuilding, no picking up of the corrugated iron or rebuilding. No, to me, when you have a right attitude, when you have God with you, you start and God will continue and God will finish. Hallelujah. Because you have a right attitude. Hallelujah. And God turn his eyes when you have in yourself the right attitude with Hallelujah. God, I can do it. Oh. God will finish it. God will comp complete what I'm studying. Amen. And that is the right attitude of Moses. While the children of Israel crying and want to go back to Egypt, Moses continue with the right attitude. Hallelujah. God will do it. God will uh, make a, a dry land. God will supply food from heaven. Hallelujah. Somehow, God will do it. Amen. There's no water. God will provide. That is the right attitude that we are talking about today. So regardless of what you're facing, your right attitude, we call it faith. Oh, hallelujah. That right attitude, we call it faith. Hallelujah. You walk into the situation, that situation will change. Why? Amen. Because you have the right attitude. Yes. Because greater, when, when, oh, you, hallelujah. when first John was talking about greater is the one who is in you. Yeah. He's talking about whatever situation that is in front of you, of you will change. Why it will change? Because greater is the one who is in you and the one out there in the world. While the world will throw things in your face, 
your right attitude in God will change it. Hallelujah. Yes. Exactly what you need. Exactly what you want. Very important to have a right Amen. attitude. Yes. I was sharing today on Friday morning. Hallelujah. On, on Thursday evening, we have a service at Katonibere Ground. So a in lot Labasa. of senior in Labasa. We have a lot of senior pastors. I said, okay, for that we meet here at Katonibere Ground. We just come and pray and have fellowship. Hallelujah. And uh, it will be the 8th. And it's uh, the end of our of seven our fast, days of fasting. Seven yes. days fasting. Hallelujah. So when we uh, arrive at 4.30 in the morning, there was a heavy rain. The people from Lamasa will witness of what I say. The heavy rain, and it was continuously. Hallelujah. So we went to the ground at Katunibere. You know, it was up to my ankle. You know, the, the rain just went into my shoes. I was just standing there. Hallelujah. At about 7.30, we left Lambasa on our way to number, number one. And it was heavy rain, and it was quite dark. It, it, it does not look like a morning. It was yeah. look like an uh, evening, because the heavy rain. Thick cloud and very low. So we were talking, and I said, oh, somewhere, somehow, God will intervene. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Because we have the right yeah. end. God will do it. When we passed the junction to Sabu Sabu, on our way to Nabualu. And then we can see the light. Hallelujah. There's a light in the horizon far away in Bua. Hallelujah. As we face Nabualu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We came to Nabualu. Even though it was still drizzling, the service started at about midday. The church uh, started in Nabualu. And those of you that are watching Nabualu, the people uh, came down and listened to the preaching. Now, as soon as I woke up to, to take on the mic, all the drizzling and all the rain stopped. And the sun started to shine. When I was preaching, then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Your attitude in Katonibere, hallelujah, hallelujah, brings on yes. the, the good weather in number one. Yeah, See, yeah. And he can good, go for anything yeah, about the your good, life. The yes. gloomy yeah, months in front of you hallelujah. will change. Because of the attitude, attitude today. today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Today Hallelujah. you need to change that attitude. Be Hallelujah. Just because of your attitude. Because your attitude is your faith and oh, trust Hallelujah. in God. You know, when Abraham woke up to the Mount Moriah, Jerusalem today, when he woke up, the, the, the Bible says, early the next morning, he took his son. He knew that his son will be sacrificed mm. to the Lord Did on top of the mountain. attitude doesn't yeah. change. Early morning, he does not uh, no, drag in or complain or ask God. Especially when, when he knows he's going to kill his yes. son to be sacrificed. 25 yeah. years, he's not telling God. 25 years, I walk with you. I, I, I serve you yeah. every not day. Not complaining. No complaining. It's the right attitude. Hallelujah. So when they came to the mountain and he tie up his son, his only son, the son that he loves. Hallelujah. Then the voice of the Lord spoke to him. Abram, hallelujah. Don't kill your son. Because of the right attitude. Hallelujah. God will always provide. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, we bring in the stories all the way from the northern to share with you because it's more practical uh, for you to identify and apply it in your life. There's a lot of things, and you're trying to tell us, well, this one here, I cannot handle. Today, take one step at a time. Look at all those leads that you know you cannot handle and separate them. You know, identify them. Uh, this one I was actually writing it down because most of us, we're always saying, okay, my new year resolution. Hallelujah. It's my new year resolution. Okay, I will not smoke uh, for six months. I will not drink for six months. Uh, my new year re uh, resolution, I will, I will not do money. this. I will not that. I will save some money. And uh, look back and just think, how many years have you been doing that new year's resolution? And how many of them have you ever achieved? <laughs> you know? Uh, because we can have every year that comes in, and then we welcome it with a new year resolution. But to actually accomplish and achieve what you have written out, not for somebody else, for you. Only no, nobody else have written it out for you. Only you. So you wrote out your resolution and look back. Say to stick it back to 2020. I uh, don't blame the pandemic or the COVID-19 or TCSA. Everything that you've written out. How many did you manage to maintain, or how many did you what manage you? to achieve? So for 2021, as you are 
in the week, and I believe most of us in January, we are writing our New Year's resolution. resolution. So as you're writing it out, you, you, you know, keep your mind open. And, and not only that, once you write your, your resolution, you separate them. Don't just have a general one, you know, like a generic one. Okay, it's the same thing. If you look back, you may be having the same, maybe after five years now, you're still writing same on the resolution. same New Year resolution. But today, try and uh, demarcate them. Or have one for the wor your workplace, and have one for your family. Uh, have one for how you've been going to church, or, or what elements of spiritual um, life do you have, or your community, and uh, have one for your children. So you need to demarcate them. So it doesn't become like a two or three liners only. It becomes like a, you know, a little paragraph or uh, dot points, maybe two or three per the um, mm -hmm. subject to all the highlights that you have highlighted, or am I, I'm talking to you about this morning. Say for work, uh, if you have been coming to work at 11 or 12 or going to work at 10 o'clock uh, the whole of last year and you've been blaming it on the COVID-19 or blaming it on other people around you, uh, try at least for 2021 yeah. uh, to say to yourself, check your contract and say, okay, according to my contract, I'm supposed to be starting work at 8 or starting work at 8.30. Uh, this is my contractual time. So you write it out that you need to change that to that. So your resolution, um, you need to write down what is practical and what is achievable. Uh, don't write things like a generic thinking, assuming uh, that it's okay, and then you just make yourself feel good that you've got your resolution. No, you write um, a, you know, the practical ones, and you put a timeline on how you're going to be achieving it. Amen. Say for work, uh, you're coming into work. And also, if you have been working, maybe in a week, uh, the reports that you provide to your immediate supervisors, um, your supervisor needs to come to you and remind you all the time about your due reports. Try and make it a resolution for you to provide the report before be being asked. You know, certain things that you need to uh, zero down uh, to your personal achievement or to better uh, your personal achievement at your workplace. Or maybe the relationship you have amongst the people that you work with. Or maybe you're always, you know, thinking negative about the people around you, always having um, issues with them. Yes, they have their issues. There's some things that they do that bother you. They irritate you. They can be a thorn. But don't allow that to overwhelm you. Don't allow that to, uh, you know, to define you. You rise above that. You try and maintain the relationship and respect the people around you. And honor them for who they are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, demarcate a line. So... You will know what I'm talking about today if you are actually working in the workplace. And, and I believe just by having that thought, the Holy Spirit will guide you on what you need to do to correct uh, yourself or correct the situation you're in. Because we can be writing the list, okay, I need a promotion or I need another job opening. That, I will guarantee today, will never happen if you don't change this. So make that your resolution and make it, uh, you know, like in a day. Maybe you come and you hold your pen, you sit around. Uh, most of the time during the day, you are busy doing your Facebook or busy doing other things that is uh, not beneficial not to the company. Yeah. And uh, the, the day comes and you're just waiting for the time to finish at 5 o'clock. So you zoom out of the office. For 2021, write it down that every hour that the company pays you uh, for you to say to yourself, I need to give back to this company who's paying me every hour uh, from this morning until this afternoon. So before you leave your office, you check your book, uh, check on the things to do, and see whether you have accomplished or achieved uh, some percentage of work that you can say to yourself, oh, I feel good. I'm being paid today, and this is what I give back. Uh, some issues that I usually have in the office, and I'll call the person and say, okay, you tell me. I'm looking at this work that you're handing me, and I see the attitude displayed in the work that I'm oh, actually yeah. reading, and I want to ask you a question. So I'll turn to her and I'll say, I want to ask you a, a question. Your salary is sitting on this, on this salary scale, more than 20 grand. Now, you rightfully tell me, is this the work you're giving me after a whole day today, or I've been asking you for the whole week, the work that you're handing it over to me? You ask yourself, is it worth the money that I'm paying you? Is it worth... Uh, you know, the company paying you this kind of money for you to produce that. And those are the simple questions that you need to ask yourself. You have been blessed out of the many that has been released and don't have any jobs at yeah. all. Uh, God has blessed you and maintained you and kept you uh, in whatever company that you're working in. So do yourself a favor and do that company a favor and make that your resolution for your work and write about your family. What about your family? Uh, maybe most of the time you're hardly at home. Uh, most of the time you say, okay, I'm busy at work or I'm, I've got church stuff to do or I have went here. So you're always having a reason and excuse not to be home. So make it a resolution. At least write down some time that you know yourself in a week or in a month uh, that you need to put aside for your family and spend it with your family, with your children. Guide your children. Talk to your children. Let them hear your 
counsel as a father. Let them hear your directive or your guidance as a mother. They need to have a portion of you so that becomes your resolution for your family. What about your church? Uh, how committed were you? Are you just one of the number that pops in on Sunday and then missing in action for the whole week? Or can your senior pastor or can your pastor uh, rely on you that you can come and help out with certain things in the church? Those are the things that you need to challenge yourself today. Like what I said, most of us now are writing our um, you know, New Year resolution. I want you to be practical with your resolution. Don't make it you know, a generic one. It's like year in, year out, and then at the end of the year, you're hardly achieving any. But make it a practical one, and don't wait until the end of the year. As you have written out your resolutions for your work, for your family, uh, for the community or the church that you belong to, and uh, whatever that you know that is out there is a priority for you. Uh, every quarter, every um, four months, you sit and you review. Okay, this is what I have written up. How many have I achieved? Or don't even wait for um, for a quarter. Uh, review it every month and do a checklist on how you have achieved. And when you are writing your resolution, uh, try and say to yourself, okay, I've been writing out all this every year, but nothing seems to change. So as you write it out. You challenge yourself, that will need adjustment. Adjustment by who? For you. Hmm. So you need to adjust your attitude. You need to adjust your diligence. If you're a lazy person, uh, push yourself at least to be, you know, a little bit more diligent and erase uh, laziness out of your life. And uh, there are certain things that you need to do. You need to adjust. If you're always lying and gossiping and saying negative things about people around you, uh, for this year, say to yourself, like what I said, you've got this resolution that you've written out that that will not just come in easy. You need to adjust or change the way yeah. of living and the habit of life that you have to bring about these things to happen or to come into fruition. So check out all those things that you have, your diligence, your attitude. Um, what else uh, do you know that it can be an obstacle in achieving uh, the things that you want to achieve? Uh, maybe before you're a spendthrift, whatever money that comes by your way, you're buying anything and everything uh, without planning your financial well. Sit down and map out and plan your financial well. When funds come into your hand, think twice. Don't mm -hmm. just stand up and start spending. No. Go back to your list and write out and see what you have written out. If you know that you've been renting all these years, maybe 10 years, maybe 5 years or 6 years, how many years you've been renting, write it out. This year, I want to buy a house or this year, I want to build a house. Look for a farm. There must be something out there that you can plan and map out your life. Like what I said, according to the Bible, you know, every man may have their own plans, but God's plans is the best. Because he says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, I alone know the plans I have for you, to prosper you, never to harm you, to bring about the future that you hope for. You may be sitting today and you're saying to yourself, oh, that cannot happen. That will not happen. I don't have the money. I don't have the ability. No. I'm, you know, we are sharing with you today that with God, everything is possible. With God, anything is possible. All you need to do, yes, you may be saying, well, okay, I'm not a dreamer. That's a dream. Instead, I dream big. Because you're not going to be the one to allow your dream to happen. God is make, going to make your dream going to happen. Mm -hmm. And back to Mboa. You know, this morning I was writing it down. All the time that Ngasilev has been going to the northern uh, trip that we used to uh, plan for him to go and come up uh, to northern uh, by monthly to do the service. The amazing part about it, I don't know whether you've seen that comes. But the amazing part about it, like from Mboa, I mean, the intention of the trip was just go to visit and uh, be the hand. Um, the little things that the ministry can help with. So what we did uh, for the 32 families in Bua, uh, we managed, thank you Auntie Sai for that big, big help uh, to Rangabo. What we managed to do, uh, families with children, some of them have got five children, four children, uh, some may just have two children. Uh, the total of children, na uh, names and numbers I didn't get, but the families, 32 families. But she went out and I was telling her, okay, go and do this. And I said, how do you buy the uniform? Is there any ready-made uniform? She said, no. Uh, they saw their own uniform, so they buy the material. Okay, work out for every child to have four uniform each. So every child has got four sets of a uniform. Every boy, is, we know she managed to go and find the shirt, find the khaki shorts, or find the solo, and their shoes and their school bags. So all the children in Bo that belongs to New Methodist, like what I said, for the 32 families, we managed to get all that for them. And when they have left that particular morning, because they left very early in the morning, and I was just convicted by the Holy Spirit that some families don't have children going to school. Uh, they don't have any children going to school. But uh, for every family, you know, we give whatever that has been given in terms of uh, dry food stuff. Uh, we bought some of food stuff and uh, the clothing, the bedding, the shoes, uh, even up to the toys, our uh, children's toys. And I was convicted by this family. So I went back on the comms and said, Auntie Sai, uh, Talaga Sai Sabi and Talaga Sai 
I know Rindy, I'm telling us, please, can you just provide feedback? How many families may not have any children? Meaning, we have invested, um, you know, in school children, but there are families without school children. So they came back with the list and said, okay, there's five of them. They said, okay, praise God. And what we did, we, we tried and gave um, each amount of money to this family that they can use for other things that they will because of the other families, they've already used it for their school children. And as I'm sharing with you today, like what I said, out of all the trip that Gasalevu um, has been doing to the northern, this particular trip is the first time ever that he arrived uh, back into Vitilevu with uh, 42 uh, salsa broom, uh, 17 big bundles of dalo, uh, 14 bottles of oil, and, and I was looking at the comps. This is not from the whole northern. This is from the two Boer zone. One is a new zone altogether, Boer South, totally new. Uh, maybe with just a few members, totally new. Boer Central uh, is, is established because it's where we started. And for these two zones, I would say maybe one zone, uh, you know, to give that. It's not that we expected it. it I mean, I, I didn't even expect for him to bring anything. Because usually when he goes to the north, I will tell him, you buy the crabs. So not for somebody to bring it, you buy the crabs and you bring it. And because my, my grandchildren, they love uh, um, Tsuro crabs. So with that conversation going, I never thought of, you know, against all odds. He's been going in good days of one or level days, good days. But in the most days that we said to ourselves, we're going to help on the charity drive and the very zone that needs help, but yet the very zone that needs help, I gave all these things. You know, it's uh, mind boggling. And, and to me, there is the attitude and not only that. And last night we received another viber. Apart from the $17, apart from the 42 sasa broom, apart from the 14 bottles of oil, there is a cow. I mean, who does that? And according to them, said there is a cow waiting there. When level, let us know when do you want that cow to come across to be to live. And that's the thing, you know, the, exactly the thing that I'm telling you. You're looking at things around you, and you know that it cannot happen. Don't allow that. Like what I said, out, after COVID, some of you get out of COVID. You're still mourning and groaning about what COVID did in your life. In March. Yeah, and there isn't really much. You're still mourning. Okay, I've lost my job. Somebody, oh, it's okay, I've lost my job. Oh, I have no money. You know, like that kind of attitude. Well, COVID was in March, you know, in March. And this Yasa just arrived. December. And uh, in December. And see the attitude? And that attitude brings about abundance. So, going through a financial uh, constraints or financial attitude. problem, it's your attitude. attitude. And now you may be telling us, okay, you know, who are they to be talking to us about our attitude? Well, attitude. we are just sharing. And now it's up to you whether you take it or not. It's, yeah. We are just sharing. sharing. Because we can see what God is doing. We can, you know, witness what God is doing. And uh, I have a friend. And I was telling uh, Gasselewa because the Talgas Venusi was actually showing or sending across the, uh, the photos of the affected areas in Boa. And doing throwing, doing throwing, and we were organizing a birthday party on the other end. And she came on that comms and she said, Oh, last night I couldn't sleep. I was thinking of my brother and his family. And I said, Which, uh, you know, which village? So she mentioned the name of the village. And I said, Oh, okay, you know, um, we just praise God that nothing happened. She, she said, I couldn't sleep last night, but I'm just so grateful that when I called this morning, they are all good. And when I was sending the photos, and she said, She sent it back, she said, That's my family home. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Tangas Venusi and uh, Randini for providing all those photos. And she said, that's my family home. That's where my brother stays. And I said, oh, man, you know, God is so good. But these are the photos provided to us, the, you know, the things happening around Boa as we asked them to check on our members. And uh, on that note, and the team went, I mean, he doesn't, they don't belong to New Methodist. And um, when the team went with the 32 families uh, contingency of the two trucks, I actually slept um, the night before on Sunday at about one o'clock in the morning, and the message I sent didn't go through. It was supposed to be like we have allocated 32 families. There were some extras to be taken uh, to other areas in Lambasa, um, as well as in I mean uh, Tunulaw and Law and um, Tunulaw and Law, but the message didn't go. And the only message I read in the morning was that. Okay, we didn't get any um, any other advice from you, and this is from uh, EM Pro Events and uh, her staff, uh, and what we did, we had taken the extra things with us. If you want us to bring it back all the way to VT level, we'll bring it back. And I said no, so they were taking it, and in the process, then I remembered the you know the comments that I read about this family all the way in Boa. 
it's amazing how God works. What really got me, uh, you know, when she shared, when my friend shared, um, you know, when I called them this morning, they were in high spirit. They were just picking up, like nothing happened, picking up the pieces. And to me, that was the attitude. That was the attitude. And according to Gasilevo, when he went and visited, uh, the same family came all the way from Suva to go to the village in Boa. So they were affected by COVID. They went to Boa and yet affected again by Tisi Yasa. That did not change the attitude or did not, you know, um, make them bitter. It, it's the other way around. So their attitude was just picking up pieces like any normal thing and they everything was okay and they move on. And the truck was actually going, you know, to go past about two villages out. So when I called Auntie Sai and she said, um, we have about this village, this village, this village, and then we will reach that village. And I said, okay, I'm still trying to get the name of my friend's uh, brother's name. So I was calling around trying to get the, the brother's name. When I did, there was just one village away. So I told Auntie Sai, look, whatever, all those items that is not being labeled, all those items that I didn't, that you were late to label them, drop all those items to this particular family. And it's just so amazing. You know, when I was actually looking back, he doesn't belong to New Methodist. For me, what I felt was the uh, activator or what calls that blessing to their family right. was the attitude. Right attitude. The right attitude. So how many more are like that? And if you're listening in today and you're still in your old attitude from the COVID, look, change. 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 You need to change your attitude. You need, you need to look around you and say, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, you look, it's not okay, but you tell yourself it's going to be okay. Because God is with Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. It will be okay. Yeah. Wherever God is with you, it will be okay. Hallelujah. When uh, the disciple uh, woke Jesus in the middle of the night, in the middle of the ocean, Hallelujah. in the middle of the storm, three middle, hallelujah, Jesus woke up because he was there. When God is with you, your attitude will always be positive. Hallelujah. You are not having a right attitude because there is no God with you. Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 6, 33, do not worry about all these things. Do not say what to eat, what yes. to drink, what to wear. Hallelujah. That is the attitude of those that does not have a, a heavenly father. Hallelujah. He said, for you to seek first the kingdom of God, all these things shall be given to you, will be added to you. So it is the attitude that we are talking about today. The attitude of serving God. The attitude of believing in God. The attitude of loyalty Hallelujah. to whatever you're doing. Yeah. And that right attitude calls Hallelujah. the provision, I believe, to that man in that village in Mua, even though they don't belong to New Methodist Christian Fellowship. And the trip was for the members. Yeah, the trip was for the members. But he became part and parcel of the blessing because of the right, right attitude. attitude. He also shared me the story that uh, one of the TV, TV stations came. I just remember now. And everybody, uh, like, they, they, they don't want to speak on the television. So he stood up and spoke on the television, talking about, we will do it, we will stand up, we'll continue to plant. Cyclone will come and go. It was that attitude that is calling for those extra cartons. Because when I saw the boys taking the cartons to his home, and he said, take the cotton to the to the church because every Red Cross or every government or uh, NGOs that come in, normally they take it to the, the church village, yeah. Yeah, because it belongs to the whole village. But because of his right attitude, that curtains go straight to his house. It's an attitude. Yes. Most of us that are watching today, your lack is because of your negative attitude. Hallelujah. Your abundance is because of your right attitude. Amen. Because God's plan is for abundance. Hallelujah. It's for blessing. Yes. I alone knows the plan I have. Oh, for hallelujah. You. It is our attitude that makes the plan come to pass in our life. Hallelujah. Yeah, Methodist. 
Na bina kai sinu ni attach kina negative. Hallelujah. Yeah. And most of the time, even some people they don't have, uh, they not worshiping our God. Yes, but they have. But the because right they have the right attitude, but the blessings are some yumi mo ino marangi. The blessing kina bina ka. It's already here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the so, condition you have to have, the, and the attitude is one of those conditions to pull it down to your level. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you have the right attitude, it's like a magnet to a, to attract the good things. When you have a negative attitude, na rabu rabuwa na tovi mate, you know, na kake denga eva, eh attracta ki eso do kitu sa do kaluda kitu sa do kaluda sanga keta kalubina ka. Hallelujah. And, and this is very good because it's the beginning of the year yeah. and it's a good check system for all of us. Right. Good check system. Most often you method this. Good check system. Check our attitude. Sometimes we may feel so righteous we think that we have it all. Now go right down. Go down. Go down to that level and do a little bit more grinding. You know, re review the life that you've been living. The, the conversation that you've been having. The kind of words that comes out from your mouth. You can be in New Zealand, you can be in Australia, you can be in America, you can be all over the place. But it's your attitude that can open doors for you, and also a bad attitude can cancel what God has for you. Hello. So whatever that you go through, you need to let go. And like what you said, you know that day, uh, he was actually preaching to the uh, Europe, a uh, senior pastor all the way from Europe. Uh, one thing that they've noticed for this COVID um, uh, phase coming in now, and the level weekend and it's okay and the affect the kikina, my one otani, my Europe. From Europe. From Europe, and you're going through that. Don't allow that to overwhelm you. Maybe there's some wrong things that you did. Maybe there's some wrong places that you went to. Rise above it and, and fight it. And say to yourself, no, these things are not going to define me. I'm going to rise up and I'm going to fight this. You need to fight it with your attitude. Because if you say that you're a loser, then you will not achieve you will anything. Lose. You will yeah. lose. But when you say that you're a winner, you're you a go-getter, oh, that thing better move. You know, no matter how bad it is, better move. If you're suffering from COVID and you're sitting down there at home, you're away from home, you tell that COVID to get off you. Tell that virus to leave your body. And if you're looking at everything that you needed to do and to solve and to settle the financial, and maybe you, you know, waiting for your papers to come through, whatever it is, it's your attitude. Be positive because that positive energy attracts what God has for you. The doctor, give my doctor, and he's so positive. The first one, Mula, what could I make on only time when difficult in breathing and it's very serious. So have a positive attitude. Positive attitude is Hallelujah. about faith. Yeah, it's another name of faith. Amen. Believing in God. We pray two days later. Sas, sas, you can believe in Hallelujah. Right attitude. So when we about to go down, go through the valley of 2021, we must have a right attitude. Hallelujah. When when God spoke to Gideon, Gideon, tell your soldiers to have a right attitude because some of them they don't have a right attitude. Amen. They don't have a right attitude. Yes. So when he was, they were tested. Twenty-two thousand went home. They don't. They are member of the army, but they don't have the right attitude to Hallelujah. go. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge our life today, brothers and sisters. You need to have a right attitude. Yes. And that right attitude has faith in God. You believe in Hallelujah. God. That God will do it. You can't do it, but God will do it. Yes. It does not mean that you can do it, and that's the end of the story. Then what is the reason of serving God? Hallelujah. So when you can't do it, that's when your God takes over. He takes over when you can't do it. Yeah, don't just change your attitude for this week or this month or for um, only a quarter. Change your attitude for good. Oh. You will struggle, but fight it. So you need to change that attitude and be consistent with your attitude, attitude. change. Uh, you need to do a lot of adjustments. Like what I said, no one is perfect. We may be here sharing with you. We've got our attitude problem as well. We have our issues as well. So mm. we are not saying that we are perfect and we are trying to tell you how to live your life. No, we also have our issues. And it goes for everybody. Boy, you know, everyone. it's a good sharing topic because you can learn and take what is yours and move Boy. the other direction. Yes. So the attitude and the consistency. That's your take after the session today. Amen. Take your attitude and be consistent. And two things you need to check. One, 
check with your circle of friends. Who are the people hanging around you? Yeah. Because these people, either they will bring negative to you, or they will bring positive, positive. to you. Either they will make you mamaku too diligent, or they will make you Buddhist sign just too lazy. Either they will bring you words for you to speak good words, edification, words of, um, you know, uh, good words about other people, or just negative words and full of compa uh, complaining, moaning, and groaning. So check out the circle of friends that you have. Friends that will help you. Uh, friends that will uplift you. Yes. Uh, friends that will be happy for you. Friends that will bring about a lot of positivity. Our friends say Mama Kutu, like what I said, for me, Yalsa, that's another word is meant the Mama Kutu, diligent, because that diligence attracts and calls a lot of things in your life. You cannot even stop that. And second, you need to review, you know, assess whatever you have gone through for 2020, assess. and certain things you cannot change. Leave it. You know, if you cannot change, don't waste your time, don't waste your mind thinking about it. Just let it go. And review your 2021 and say to yourself, I'm not going to be there, but I will be there. So there will be your take today as we have Holy Communion. We only have three minutes as advised by Talga Sasama today. And that three minutes, we will be having a Holy Communion. As you come before you to have Holy Communion, uh, I just received a feedback. There's a lot of... Uh, people sitting out there and not knowing what to do with a lot of things that they're going through and some a lot of domestic differences a lot of domestic uh, abuse. Uh, fights and abuse a lot of domestic uh, you know um, uh, problems. problems that uh, you think that's going to take away everything that you have or you're focusing a lot on it no let go allow God let go I received a text on the other day um, this is particular lady she texts not belonging to the church and she said, um, uh, please, can you pray for, for us? Uh, we are always fighting as a couple, always fighting. Uh, please pray for my husband to find a space in his heart to forgive me uh, for the wrong that I did. So how many more are out there that they are doing that? And for those of you who are up, you know, foreign, outside PG, you have your families back here at home. I'm also for Australia and New Zealand. We came in a lack of a Kataka organized taking a cany aid in Matinitu. So we can end the lack of the Lida Kakosri, Mimi Kilan and Kaiba Koti Kimikin and Matinitu, Evacatarakin, Mebuki, Nanomulikin and Nomatawale. More luckily, the Kataka may run you don't ever get some help to come back home. And some of you, when you leave the shores of Fiji, you forget that you have your children and your spouse or your wife back here at home. Wherever you are, you may be having a minute or to listen to this uh, uh, sharing today, or you may get to hear about it later. I will need you, or we will need you, or we, we would like to tell you, you that, uh, yeah, we would like to challenge you for you to, you know, seek God seek and remember your family. Yeah. Uh, don't do the things, uh, you know, that they wouldn't do, the things that uh, when you hear, you wouldn't do. So don't do those things. Uh, some of you, you're going there, you're going on a drinking spree, uh, young gone uh, party here and there, uh, having extramarital affairs. That's not the solution. Maybe to you it's an enjoyment, or maybe to you it's, uh, you know, that uh, joy and the thing that you're enjoying yourself. But take a moment to think of your family back here at home. Yeah. And they've uh, sacrificed a lot um, for you to go. And uh, at the end of everything, you will yeah. come back to your family. And take those moments to think of all these things. We can't have a crown to my mother can you call the center in one in the yellow way, mend of the cover, the big eyes, and you can can you call the hello mature. But let that wisdom is going to call God's provision to you. School children, I know you are logging in today and you're also joining us on the session today. Yep. Uh, pray, like what I said, if you know that you are already going to school and you're all good, thankful. You're just grateful to God. If you know that you still have a list to be answered, then this is the moment, this is the time. We have one minute. And we'll ask Gassilev to lead us with our Holy Communion this morning as we pray and partake uh, this morning. As we already share every Sunday, the uh, bread represent it represents mm. the body of Christ. And uh, the wine uh, represents the blood, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. We will partake together Hallelujah. as we come to the Lord. Let us eat together. Oh, your mercy never Move up to the front if you're actually worshiping at the worship center. If you're at home, stand in front of your TV screen. After they finished their dinner, he poured out the wine and said, This is the wine represent my blood. It's a new covenant. When we drink this, remember, all your sin been washed. Hallelujah. Because of the covenant. Amen. Let us drink together before we pray. Lord, we pray in the mighty thank name of Father. Jesus. And we thank you for the Holy Communion, the covenant yes, this morning. Lord. Thank you that we'll turn a new page, a new oh, life, hallelujah. a new leaf. 
new chapter yes. and we thank you because only you can do it we call things so father we thank you father Father god for families that are going through hard times we pray for open doors and opportunity amen our children into 2021 year term that will begin very shortly we pray for wisdom and knowledge thank you father god for those that are stuck up with bills and financial problems we pray for yes. open doors and opportunity. Break through into the we thank you, Father God. We are turning to you. We are looking to you. Oh, we hallelujah. have a right attitude. We have a right positive attitude. That you will do it. Because you say you're not a man to lie. nor a son of man to oh, change hallelujah. your mind. Yes, Lord. As we release a blessing from here. We release anointing from here. Oh, hallelujah. Into every home. Into every couple. Yes, Father. Every worship center. Every soul. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. We release your anointing and blessing this morning. Thank you for the covenant that we stand on today. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody that's standing with their covenant, and you know exactly. We thank you, Father God, as we release the blessing today in the mighty name of Jesus, into their family, into their relationship, into their schoolwork, Amen. into their future, into their home, into Amen. their car, into their promotion, into uh, their field. Thank you, Father God. We receive it this morning. We receive it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Hallelujah. And everyone say, Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. So thank you for joining us at the uh, God of Our Nation 1030 today. And we look forward to the next one next Sunday. So if you're free, living around silver, join us at the fourth for show. Sure. And we believe uh, that you'll be richly blessed with the powerful word of God. So on that note, thank you. All the way from Turek in Suva. Amen. You are watching the God of Our Nation program, Against All Odds, Kingdom Economics. Trust God with your life and share the little you have for others to live. The righteous shall live by faith. In the past few months, our beloved nation had to endure the global pandemic COVID-19 and the aftermath of Tropical Cyclone Herald. In spite of it all, we choose to make a difference where we can.